Link TV, connecting you to the world. Link TV is viewer supported. Watch more at linktv.org. Today on Earth Focus, filmmaker Anna Sophia Joanne says we need a new way to produce our food. Her film Fresh shows why today's industrial agriculture is unsustainable. Anna Sophia Joannes is from Switzerland and holds a law degree from New York's Columbia University. In her film Fresh, she celebrates Americans with a practical vision for producing fresh food while benefiting the planet. She shares her insights with Earth Focus correspondent Miles Benson. Anna Sophia Joannes, you've made a film called Fresh. It's about food. Why did you want to make a film about food? Food is such a microcosmos um, of the problems, you know, dependency on oil, um, exploitation of people, exploitation of our natural resources, pollution, etc. But it's very much a microcosmos of what the solutions can look like. You know, we all eat, we feel connected to food, food can be delicious and healthy. I think the main problem with our f current food system, and I think it's true for a lot of industry, is that it's incredibly consolidated. And what I mean by that is that there's very, very few companies that dominate your food from the seeds all the way to your plate. So what happens with this is that what then drives the decision is not the consumer interest, not the interest of the community or the health of the animals or the health of the planet. It's just the bottom line of these companies. So you describe a vertically integrated... And horizontally. ...corporate... Both agriculture industry yes. in which the farmers themselves are virtually hired hands. There is um, an example of th those farmers in my movie. Um, they are uh, chicken contract farmers um, for a big company. The only thing they do is kind of warehouse those chicken because you know we're talking about over 25,000 chicken in one house and they get the chicks from the company, they get the feed from the company, they're told you know how many days they need to keep the you know the chicks and what temperature to keep them and what to do. They do that and then the company comes and picks the chick, the, the, the full you know grown chicken from them and then process them. Is there a handsome payoff for the farmer though? No, no. Farmers usually usually are the worst off in that chain of agriculture. Um, so often they get in a lot of debt in order to keep up with what's expected of them. These things that the farmers would not be able to just do it based on the amount of money they're getting from the corporation. Our government is consistently giving them a welfare check. Uh, it's, it's literally in order to keep them from going bankrupt. How about the consumer? Is the consumer getting a good deal though? Is the food cheap? Is is, is plentiful? Is this kind of an approach yeah, to I, uh, feeding a nation uh, healthy in an economic sense. You know, let's see. <laughs> and where do we start with what's wrong? First of all, when people say something is not sustainable, you know, you have to understand the meaning of that means we can no longer sustain the system. So basically, the system is breaking down. So it's not so much, well, we could continue this way. No, you can't because we're running out of clean water, we're running out of soil, we're polluting everything that we have. I mean, there is, everything is, we're running out of oil and the system is completely dependent on oil. So at every level, this system is going to have to change. When people say the industrial food system is unsustainable, we throw around that word without really thinking through, well, what does that really mean? Well, it really means it can't go on this way. Monocultures are very dangerous things. A monoculture is a lot of the same species grown together without variation. Nature doesn't have monocultures. When you grow too much of the same thing, you end up with too many of the pests of that thing. The only reason you can grow vast amounts of the exact same species of animal in close confinement is because you use antibiotics to keep them alive. Right now, um, there is basically 99% of the cows are like one or two breed of cows. If there was an illness that would hit these cows, we could lose all of them at once. It's what happened kind of with the potato fa famine in Ireland, right? They had one kind of potato, um, some problem pests came around and destroyed the whole growth of the potato. And then there was a huge famine in Ireland. So, you know, by not having diversity in our field, we are much more uh, susceptible to crisis in the environment, um, climate changes and whatnot. So, so you're saying our, our food supply isn't a rock solid and reliable, oh, it's not that at it's all. a fragile system. It's very it's fragile. It's made fragile by these practices you've yes, described. Yes, incredibly in fragile. Family. 
g give us a, a, a vision of what agriculture would be like and how it would be different uh, under the uh, change that you're suggesting it be healthy for us. If you imagine the first paradigm, the industrial paradigm, as just a straight line where you just extract and then you dump, you extract and you dump, and you're slowly losing, you, you, know, you don't have anything else to extract and you don't know where to dump anymore, the alternative paradigm, the sustainable paradigm, is a circle. In a circle, everything fits. Everything has a, a role. And in my movie, Joel Salatin is the example of that. If you look at nature as the template and look at the pattern and say, how can we most closely approximate this? Let's treat the herbivore like an herbivore first, and then the other things will fall into place. Okay. All right! Um... We move the cows virtually every day from paddock to paddock. And what we're doing here is mimicking the natural herding instincts of herbivores in nature. They're moving on to fresh forage away from yesterday's excrement. It allows the area that they were in to revegetate. And so we follow the cows, about three days behind the cows, with the egg mobile. And then the chickens scratch through the cow patties, eat out the fly larva. That provides their salary. From a spiritual standpoint, the chickens are not just something to lay eggs, you know, but they are, they are fellow workers here alongside us. They are with us. And so we honor and respect them to allow them to fully express their chickenness. And that gives them um, that gives them a, an honored part of, of the team to be workers and team players with us. It's not completely sustainable. He still needs oil, you know, he still has, you know, equipment. Um, he still needs to buy grain for his pigs and his chicken, but he buys it locally and he tries to buy it so that it's not genetically modified. It's not a completely closed circle, but he's aiming towards recreating this relationship that you can observe in nature. Joel talks about mimicking nature. Do we have enough farmers in this country that have all of them adopted this kind of farming, they'd still be able to produce enough food to feed as many people as Again, we need to feed? a great question. No, we don't have actually enough farmers right now because we've, we've gotten rid of so many of them or so many of them went bankrupt in the 90s. The good news, though, is that a lot of people are wanting to farm. And the other good news, which we all know, is that when there are real economic opportunity in a field, people will come and do it. So we need to help them stay on the land, the ones that exist. And then slowly, slowly, if this becomes like a real opportunity, a real economic, sustainable thing to do for people, we'll get more and more farmers. There's a lot of people that want to farm, but that can't have access to land. Anna Sophia Janis, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world. To learn more, visit linktv.org.